Good evening, everyone. My name is Terry Withrow. I am with the Stanislaus County Board of Supervisors, and this is your update, your COVID update for today. Today is Monday, July 13th. Um, to give you the latest as far as where we stand today, most of you probably heard, if you didn't, the governor came out today with a new order. Um, the new order is actually taking us backwards here again. Um, because of our cases increasing, the increase in cases in our county, and I think about 30 counties actually this applies to here in our state, um, we're going to be closing down the following um, operations again. And these are all really um, indoor operations that we're going to be required to close. Um, what the governor listed off today at lunch in his press conference is gyms and fitness centers. Those are going to be closed again unless they can do it outside, I assume. Offices for non-critical sectors, hair salons and barber shops. So those of you that didn't get your hair cut and get in before, now we're back to that again. Again, unless it can be done outside. Um, malls, malls will be closed, so our, our mall here will be closed down. And, um, and churches. They're going to close down churches again. And again, this is all coming from the state of California um, from the governor today as a result of his press conference. So um, so not good news. As, as you've read in the paper, we continue to have an increase of cases. Um, we continue to do increased testing. So that has a lot to do with some of that. As we continue to increase our tests, um, we find more and more people have this. But the increase in cases isn't as concerning as the hospitalizations, the increase in people being hospitalized. It's a lot younger crowd um, that's ended up being in the hospital. Our death rate isn't going up, so that's a good thing. Actually, the percentage of deaths in comparison to the number of positive cases continues to drop. We're down around 1% right now. But we do want to make sure that we have capacities in our hospitals not only for the COVID cases, but for the non-COVID cases. And, and that's part of the surge we're seeing in our hospitals too right now, is we have um, so many people who have been out sheltering in place and not doing the normal things that they would do um, if they had health issues. They're staying home, they're not going to the doctors when they, when they should. And because of that, people are waiting until things become acute as a result of this shelter in place. People are waiting until it becomes acute and they end up in our um, emergency room and end up in the hospital um, because they've waited too long, whereas in the past they would have gone in, had something treated and taken care of ahead of time, done preventative things, and now it's become acute. So it's not only um, COVID cases that are taking up our hospital beds, it's non-COVID cases because people have been sheltering in place and not doing the things that they normally would for um, good preventative care. So, so that's what concerns us. That's what we're up against here now. Um, in our community. And so we continue to watch our hospital beds. Um, not only the beds are as much trouble at this point now as the staffing. We're having staffing issues and the hospitals are working on this um, between all our hospitals here in the county. They're working to bring in what they call travelers, um, nurses in to be able to help. And, um, and there's some state help coming from the state actually also. But, um, but that's the bigger issue. Um, bed capacity is one thing, but staffing, we need to have the nurses to be able to um, staff the beds. So, so if we get in a situation where that where we become overrun, then we have to look for alternate care um, facilities here. And so an alternate care site. And as many of you may have heard, the old scenic hospital, a lot of you are aware of, um, early on we bought 110 beds. The county purchased 110 beds. And so we have that facility ready and waiting if we need to um, staff, staff that up and bring patients in there. Now, those wouldn't be COVID patients. They would be non-COVID patients moving from the hospital to leave the more um, uh, ICU patients that would be COVID patients in the hospitals. We, and we would move the non-ICU patients to, um, to that facility if needed. The state also has um, um, some of these alternate care sites available also. And, um, and so those would come into play too if we ever got to that point. So we think we're prepared for this as we continue to watch the hospitalizations. That's what I do every day. The number comes out around five o'clock every night. We post it to our site and you can see whether it's going up and down. And if that were to go up um, dramatically in a steep, word, a steep curve, um, we could be in trouble. Um, and then we would call in some of these alternate care sites as we need those. But um, but right now we're just monitoring it and the hospitals are monitoring it and we're really trying to make sure we have the staffing available to um, take care of patients. Um, like I said, the good news is we are not um, seeing a dramatic increase in deaths. I, that number is going down. I think younger people 
are actually um, the newer cases that we're getting are more younger people and they um, for the most part recover from this and so it's really we just need to continue to take care of those with underlying health conditions and those probably 70 and older that um, are the ones we need to be concerned about and because those are the ones that really have trouble with the virus so um, um, other stuff that I could talk to you about here um, we've got um, for employers that have um, employees that uh, are coming down with the virus um, as far as how do they handle that what should they do um, on our website which is standemergency.com we have a letter on there that they can use to help them um, address what to do with someone who calls in and says they have the virus how long should they stay off when can they come back you can go to the website and and that can help you with that so um, as far as how long this is going to go this latest order uh, from the governor of closing us back down again um, we don't know We'll have to see. Um, again, they're all watching. There are 30 counties that are on this list that um, we have to continue to see where our numbers are. Again, I, I, I think we really need to look at hospitalizations and not just cases because I think the cases are going to continue to go up as we continue the testing. And eventually we're going to, we hope soon by the end of this month that we'll actually have the, anti, uh, the antibody testing up and running. And we can test that to see who have already had it, and which means you probably won't get it again. So all those things are, um, are things that we're working on. Um, our staff at the county is working 24-7 on this thing. And um, I can't thank all of them enough um, for the hours that everybody's putting into this. Um, it seems like it's never enough. We're never doing everything that everybody wants us to do as it comes to this um, virus and how we're handling it. But I can tell you it's not from lack of effort. We have got good people doing a lot of long, hard work, long, hard hours, um, hard work. Um, trying to protect this community and get us through this thing. So I want to thank all of our everyone here in the county at, at, that that's working so hard on this thing. So I think that's kind of all we have for you um, tonight. Kind of a disappointing um, day with the latest news from the governor here. And so um, I ask everybody just to continue with their social distancing, wearing the mask when you can, and um, and we hope that we will get through this thing, kind of power through this thing, protect the most vulnerable you know and as best you can and we will get through this thing and and as they always stay say here stay healthy and stay safe thank you